Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2055. Be prepared to be inspired and buckle up. We're at the W Series today. We're going to be going fast. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Monroe, New York, with a very special and fast-paced guest by the name of Chloe Chambers. Chloe, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Yep. Thank you. It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have some fun today. You're you're uh, somebody who's always ready to release the clutch, uh, waiting for that uh, green light to come on. And I'm going to give you a, gr a proper introduction in a moment here, but before I do. Maybe one little thing you could share with us that most people might not know about you, Chloe. Yeah, so I guess um, most people might not know this about me, just in general, kind of day-to-day -day life, but I actually hold a Guinness World Record. So alongside all my competitive racing achievements, I have a Guinness World Record for the fastest vehicular slalom, which I did in 2020. That was set in a Porsche 718 Spider. Oh, you know, you gave away my secret. I was going to mention that in your intro, but as long as we're on the topic. Now, what you listeners may not know is that Chloe is still in high school. So a couple years ago, you strapped into a 718 Spider. Holy cow. What was that like? Yeah, so that was really cool. It was Porsche's idea. I had actually just gotten my permit to drive in New York State. Oh my God. <laughs> so technically I was road legal partially, but basically Porsche had brought the idea to me uh -huh. and they had the idea to do the world record. They supplied the cars. They We had to do it on our airport runway. So we had to find a runway that was long enough. And so they found all of that, you know, they planned it all out and then... Um, I guess it just went from there and uh, they had the whole film crew there to film that uh, video that they have on their YouTube and social media and everything. And, you know, that was just a pretty cool deal that I got to do. And yeah, I mean, it was a good experience to work with a company that big. Oh, yeah. So since you just got near driving permit. I'm sure you said, you know, now that I've proved to you, Portia, that I can drive this, why don't you just give me the car? Because, you know, I'm ready to start driving now. That would be pretty cool, right? Yeah. I, it's so <laughs> many people have said that. A lot of people from like school, especially, they're like, did you, did you get the car? And I'm like, well, no, but, no. you know, if you want to all kind of make a petition or something. Yeah, everybody I pitch in glad. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, I love those cars. I think the, the Porsche Boxster came in. in fact, I like the Cayman even better, but they're awesome cars, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I guess the Slalom is a really good way to kind of test that. It's a very precision based type of driving. So, you know, it's not all out speed. You're not going to go 120 miles sure, an hour yeah. in that. But I guess that really shows the handling of the car. It does just the performance that you can get out of it. Wow. Well, congratulations. Very cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <Yeah. laughs> awesome. Well, let me give you a proper introduction and then we'll dive into this wonderful world that you have with racing right now. Chloe Chambers is a racer with the W Series, the International Single Seater Motor Racing Championship for female drivers. She started racing at the age of eight in go-karts and grew up watching Formula One and attending autocross events with her father. Chloe started running in club events, racing in some of the biggest kart races in the world, including SKUSA Super Nationals, then the senior class in karting, and earned the title of WKA Grand National Champion at a very young age. Then a Porsche came knocking, as she said, and she set that Guinness World Record. Ah, oh, I'm jealous. Very cool. <laughs> she beat the world's record by over a half a second in that 718. Congratulations. That achievement went global virally. Back in uh, 2021, Chloe advanced to the Formula 4 USA Championship to develop her skills in Formula Racing. And as I said, all of this, and she's still in high school. Very cool. We'll be back in just a minute to learn more about Chloe and the W Series. But first, a word from our valued sponsor. So give them a little listen and we'll be right back. My friends at Covercraft offer you 10 different options. That's right, 10 for your vehicle's protection. You can choose from Weather Shield HP, HD, Sunbrella, Ultratect, Reflect, Form Fit, 
custom view shield and their newest five layer all climate cover three layer moderate climate cover and a five layer indoor option you have all sorts of ways to protect your car all of these are custom tailored by covercraft's talented craftspeople it's the form and fit with the quality to attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965 surface protection is the best way to preserve the investment you've made in your vehicles it's what i do Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. I have a Covercraft cover for every one of my vehicles, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code YEAH21, Y-E-A-H-21, at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off your order, plus you get free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping. Just use the code YEAH21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day, and he asked me about American Collectors Insurance. He said, while I listen to you on Cars Yeah, you're always talking about agreed value collector car insurance. Well, I insure all my cars on my regular auto insurance policy, and I've done it for years. Why use a different company for my collector cars? I get a multi-car discount. Isn't that good enough? I suggested he call his carrier and ask how much he would get if his collector car was totaled are stolen. He called back and said, boy, that was a scary conversation. Their value of my car wasn't even close to what it's really worth. Thank you for the education, Mark. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you receive with an agreed value policy. American Collectors Insurance has been protecting enthusiasts since 1976. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green's at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. They're the ones that insure my car. That's American Collectors Insurance. So, Chloe, we're back. So I want to dive a little deeper into the corner, something you're very good at doing, uh, about your racing series. So let's first go back to this karting that got it all started. Obviously, you loved what you were doing, and you progressed through the field, won some titles, championships, and then decided to take a very big, bold move at a very young age with uh, the W Series. But let's first start back when you went to those races with your dad and kind of got the, uh, the, the hook set with racing. Well, I had grown up watching Formula One, you know, ever ever since I can remember. That was our weekend thing that I would do with my dad. And he was always into cars. He had done some autocross and track days. This was all before I started racing. And so I had just tagged along with him. And um, one day I was at one of his events with my mom while he was on track. And I was admittedly getting a little bit bored um <laughs> yeah you know just I standing drive, there and, Mom. yeah so that's basically what I said I said you know like how can I drive and when can I drive and me being eight years old obviously I can't drive a car <laughs> yeah it might be a little tough yeah and so my parents had done some research found out what go-karting is found out that that's how you get into professional motorsports and they took me to a track up near our house it's a track here in new york i guess that's just re- really where it all started amazing so you started karting and you liked it obviously and you progressed through the field and tell us a little bit about uh what led up to and uh getting the championship and then that transition that you made from carts into real cars yeah so I just kind of gradually made progress throughout my karting career, you know, up until the point where I came third at one of the biggest races in the world against 80 other people. Wow. And in 2020, there wasn't a lot going on that year. Yeah. Well, Um, there was that little thing called COVID. Yeah. You know, COVID came and then money was running a little tighter. And so we started doing just whatever races I guess we could. And so we had that race in Charlotte. Motor Speedway mm-hmm. and for the WKA Grand National Championship. And so that was a good little kind of last big race that I did in my karting career before I moved up into Formula Four the next year. You know, that was just a really good learning experience. The jump from carts to cars is probably the one of the biggest jumps you'll ever take well that's uh, <laughs> you know, I want to stop you here for a second because that, you just casually glanced over that carts to I mean, 
formula car, that's a big jump, a huge jump. And what was that like for you at that, that first strapping yourself into one of those cars and going, oh boy, what have I gotten myself into here? Or were you just so excited to get into, and I, I won't say karting isn't real racing because this is very serious real racing, but to get into a real car and, and such a young age, that must have been something. I think obviously like I was excited to finally get into a race car, make that first step. And to be honest, though, driving the car on a bigger track, relatively speaking, it feels slower when you're driving because in karting, like everything just moves so fast. That's kind of what karting is made for. And then I guess getting into this car on this bigger track and this car is relatively slow compared to higher levels of that a formula car racing and so you know you're on the same size track as what these other cars run but you're going you know you're going 100 miles less than <laughs> a formula one car would go yeah. so it really doesn't it doesn't feel as fast but obviously you're going quick yeah but you got more around you bigger car bigger wheels tires all that kind of fun stuff but uh what a what a fun way to make a transition there now you know looking back at your past you have always been a bit of a a a big competitor you swam competitively uh you did simulator driving you even have a dog named turbo right oh yeah (laughs) yeah i have a dog named turbo and a dog (laughs) named portia uh her name is spelled p-o-r-t-i-a though so okay you know (laughs) (laughs) We still we still kept up with the theme, though. Yeah, I mean, I'd been competitively swimming since I was six or seven years old uh, before I started karting. I guess that's kind of where my competitive nature started. And uh, I really enjoyed that. So I kept up with that. I still keep up with it till now. And then I use the simulator a lot to just prepare for the next race. Obviously, it's fun to do as well, just, you know, with friends and do some casual races here and there. I like anything that's competitive, head to head. Um, my brother, he does soccer, so that's not quite the same. It's more that's more of a team sport, but I think we all kind of have a little bit of competitiveness to us. I think so. Now, the W series, tell me a bit about why you chose that group to get into the and and tell our listeners more about what it's all about because one of the great things that I learned, I had two of your your fellow teammates on the show, Ayla and Tabor, last year and this series is a really wonderful way for women to get involved in racing. It's supported financially, so that element is taken out, which is like one of the biggest elements in racing, it seems like in the last couple of decades, it's all about the money because it's so expensive. But tell me what this experience has been about for you and what it means for you. Well, the W Series has been what I had wanted to get into since 2019. I was still in carts at that time. So I was just, my dad and I had made this plan that we would be able to make my first year in cars just so that I could get enough exposure so that I could get picked up by the W Series and invited to a tryout. That was our whole plan all along. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, I guess that ended up playing out just yeah, I guess one so. year later, <laughs> yeah. but it still planned out just the way that we thought it would. And, um, to be here now confirmed for the 2022 season, I think it's exactly how I had wanted it to be. And so this is the biggest series that I had raced that I've raced in and to be racing alongside formula one is it's just something that I had always looked to do. And so Actually, funnily enough, I've never been to a Formula One race. Um, <laughs> so, the, so, so, the so the first, first time is, you went was when you were racing it. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's I incredible. Think, think, yeah, that's a little surreal. Fun fact, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, just to be a part of the series, it's very meaningful because this is like a big step forward. Oh, yeah. From doing Formula Four US. Now I'm racing internationally. I've, I haven't I haven't ever raced internationally, even in karting. I've always just stayed in North America, the US and Canada. And I went out to Barcelona for that preseason test and it was just something else. You know, obviously a faster car than Formula Four. And I just think the professionalism of the series is just incredible compared to the U.S. Yeah, it's really spectacular. And for you listeners, if you missed my talk with uh, Catherine Bond-Muir, who's the CEO of the W Series, she's really the lady behind this whole thing. Go back and listen to it because it's really wonderful to learn how this whole thing came about, what it all means, and a brilliant move to put you on the same weekend and give you the exposure that F1. I mean, that is beyond 
unimaginable almost to me yeah. to be able to run with these guys. So, so let me ask you this, with the tracks you've run so far, do you have a favorite? Well, I feel like I, I, I will have a definite favor at the end of this year, but right now I'm just looking forward to kind of experiencing these other European tracks, you know, Asian tracks as well. Yeah. Uh, don't forget Japan. Yep. And uh, obviously Miami, the first race, home race. Exciting. Uh, brand new track for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and then I've actually raced in Miami in the parking lot of the hard rock stadium oh really so not not quite the same <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not quite the same thing as as the formula one track but i've raced in that area and i've had good history there so mm-hmm. i'm looking to do the same and so you know it's kind of a cool little full circle moment for me can't even imagine and the fact that you've been able to be at the events and hang out with the i don't know how much hanging out you get to do with the formula one drivers i know once the time your racers get to tracks the focus is on the race pretty much so there's probably not a lot of uh, party time or sitting around but do you get to converse or be around the formula one drivers and talk to any of them i'm not sure because last year there were you know all those covid mandates so they weren't allowed to actually mix paddocks oh that's right so you know, the Formula One paddock was completely alone. W Series paddock was completely alone. You weren't allowed to go into each other's paddocks, but this year it's a lot more open. So, you know, I'm hoping I'll get to talk to some of them. But, you know, I think just to be there, to have all the fans, the Formula One fans, and, and you know, the American Formula One fans. You know, I'm the only American driver in the series this year. So it's almost like... I've, I, it's it's really cool that I have two home races, but I think Miami, just the atmosphere of that will be really cool. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Well, congratulations for all of this. I like to ask my guests about what I call driving inspirations, people who've been key mentors in their lives, been very influential in helping them achieve the goals that they've achieved. Is there somebody like that for you? Yeah, I would say probably my biggest would be my dad. He got me into racing in the first place. And then you know, he's taught me a lot, not just about driving initially. Um, you know, he, obviously he was my coach and my mechanic throughout my entire career in karting. And he's taught me so much about the business side as well, actually. And so we travel to races together. I don't think there's been like one race where he hasn't been there. Just I've learned a lot. And, you know, we make a pretty good team, obviously, yeah, to make it this far together. And um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess him mainly obviously my whole family and cool he must be very proud no doubt (laughs) uh as all of us dads are of our daughters i've got a daughter myself so yeah that just goes with the with the uh, the (laughs) part of the role there exactly if you were going to advise a young person who would love to get into racing whatever capacity of racing uh achieve the kind of things you've achieved at your young age what kind of advice would you give them i would say just work hard you don't have time to really just you know, slack off, right. so to speak. Just uh, if you really, really want it, then I would say work really hard at it. Learn, take t- take time to learn about not just driving. Um, I think it's really valuable to learn how to market yourself and mm-hmm. find sponsors. Because obviously, like you said earlier, racing is expensive. Oh, yeah. So being able to market yourself, I think, is a big part part of it as well. Oh, absolutely. How to communicate properly, all of those things. How have you managed balancing being a student and being a racer? And you've been doing this a while, so you've learned to manage it a bit. But I would imagine people listening going, how on earth do you do all that? Keep up with your studies and focus on your driving. That's a, I mean, most high school students, I think I mentioned you uh, in our pre-show chat. I was just thinking about how to get get out of the classroom and go surfing (laughs) when I was in high school. So how's that balance been for you? I get asked this a lot, actually. So basically, I started racing when I was eight years old. I am more than double that now. And so, you know, I, I've had I've had nine years to yeah, half your figure lifetime. it out. Yeah. And so I guess I just kind of have found out a way to come up with a sort of system. Um, I know the ways that I learn the best. So when I'm away, I can use those the way that I want to use them. Obviously, the Internet is very helpful. YouTube. Um, (laughs) and, uh, I think overall, a lot of, most of my teachers are pretty supportive and all of them understand what I'm doing at least a little bit. And so I think the support of teachers is a big part as well. And just, I've come up with certain little systems on how to get my work done, when I'm going to do things and how long I'm going to take to do them and just keeping organized mainly. 
Well, these are incredible life skills you're learning at a young age with being disciplined, time management, uh, focus, and all of that. And then you throw the other angle here of two years of remote learning and COVID, which I'm thinking here, maybe that might have helped a little bit, but I'm not quite sure how, but I think, you know, you've learned how to do some remote learning. And I really take my hats off to all the students around the world that have had to deal with this because you guys have been dealt a, a deck of cards here that nobody's ever had to deal with at a young age in dealing with remote learning and still trying to have some kind of a life around family and friends and school. And I mean, wow, it's incredible. Hats off to you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm really proud of the the youth around the world that have had to deal with this. And they seem to, I know it's caused a lot of challenges and, you know, you talk about depressionary challenges and things like that. But uh, really, I think for the most part, young people have done a tremendous job and uh, really, really impressive. But there are challenges in life. When we come back from a little break here, I want to talk about a big challenge with you, big obstacle, maybe even a big failure you face coming up in this career of yours. So keep that thought in mind. Keep the seatbelts on. And we'll be right back. I've teamed up with AutoGeek because, well, they've been the leading source of auto detailing products, accessories for more than 20 years. Their Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax is specially formulated from Brazilian Carnuba Wax. It's easy to apply on any paint surface and provides that warm glow that we love, especially me on my vehicles. You're going to love it too. A favorite of car shows countrywide, Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax from AutoGeek wipes on easily, requires no drying time, is easy to remove, and provides up to 90 days of protection against damaging environmental contaminants. This wax is designed to exceed the standards of the most discriminating enthusiasts and collectors. Go to autogeek.net to get yours for the best product selection on the internet today, along with their very skilled technical support. Autogeek.net. That's where I go for all my detailing needs. That's autogeek.net. Did you know that less than 3% of all automotive technicians in the U.S. are women? You may not be surprised, but you should be concerned because our country is facing a massive technician shortage right now. Skilled, qualified techs are in high demand, and we need young men and women to consider these viable career paths. Cars yeah knows that women make great techs. I've interviewed a lot of them, so we support the nonprofit Tech Force Foundation and its Women Tech Rocks initiative to ensure women see themselves in this profession, the industry, and the workforce. Learn more at techforce.org today. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world. The people who share your passion and mine Smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARSYEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, Chloe, let's talk about this. Uh, Racing, and you've learned this already in your young age. Ups and downs. One weekend, you're a champion. The next weekend, eh, maybe not so. Uh, Cars break, things happen. What has been one of the biggest obstacles for you, challenges to overcome in your racing career so far? I think probably, uh, I think this was around the time of about 2015, 2016. That year, we had just, I had just moved up to a new class and, Typically, when you move up, the carts are quicker, heavier. And so this class I moved into, I was kind of having a rougher time getting back up to speed, getting back to the front where I was prior. And so I had a string of races where I had kind of been running closer to the back than I had wanted And so my dad and I were at the race, you know, he had asked me like, you know, if you, if you really want to keep doing this, we'll do it. But if you, if you don't want to do it anymore, you can tell me like I'm giving you an out to stop if you want to. And thing is, I uh, never had thought about quitting 
and even then I was like, well, why would I quit? (laughs) I like was like, I don't understand that. I made it this far. I've already been doing this for years. I don't know why I would just be done. And at the time I had already, I had obviously known that I had talent. It's just that point in time was a string of races. And I was just like, man, I don't know what's happening. And, but you know, I think that, that, that was like a really big kind of hurdle to jump for me. And, um, it was, uh, a good experience to, you know, experience something like that, something like so many bad races. And my dad and I had always said, like, just learn from every, I wouldn't call them a failure, but just learn from every bad race Mm. or yeah. bad day at the track or something don't leave the track without having learned something from that experience wow yeah, that's incredibly powerful experience your father gave you a great quote i saw by the the late nikki lauda and of course we all know of his racing accomplishments and some tragedies and, and challenges as well he said i've learned a lot more from races that i didn't win than races i won and i always remember that and it's a Kin to what you just said. Uh, make sure you yeah. learn from every failure, right? Yeah, that, that's. That, I think that quote is so true. And you can you can have won races, but have come out of them not having had a good race. You know, you could have won races and just not raced anybody the whole time. You could have been on your own the whole time. And, sure. and I think I think the most the most fun races I've ever had might not have been the ones that I've necessarily won. And the best races that I that I've had that a lot of people, the most memorable races, I suppose, uh, those ones actually I haven't won. Ah, you know, another thing comes to mind, uh, Bruce Canepa, who, uh, used to race, still does some serious vintage racing and restores and builds some of the coolest cars on the planet. He's in, uh, he's been a guest here, Scotts Valley, California. He competes at the uh, vintage races. He drives a Porsche, I think a 935. Um, and he always sets himself up in, practice so that he ends up on the pole but then he always does something so he has to start at the back of the track and i asked him one time i said why do you do that he said well it's no fun when you start at the front and you kind of know because he's competing against non mostly non-professionals that i'm just gonna run away from and win i like to work my way through and make it make it competitive and see by the end of the race which are short races can i get to the front same kind of thing in a way right yeah, I mean, I think that's what karting is really good for, getting in those close races. And obviously, karting is fun. It's good training physically. And in karting, you can run a lot closer than you can in a car. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in a car, you have aero. You, you have to, you know, keep in mind overheating issues. And in a go-kart, like, you can have people running in a pack that 10 people deep. And when I when I would race in karting, I would typically just reuse old tires rather than just keep buying new ones and then starting at the front and just you know running away with it because to me that's that's really no fun and plus you don't you don't learn a whole lot from doing that right yeah when you're in a pack you learn a lot <laughs> that's yeah <for> sure <laughs> you know one of the things i was going to bring up that we didn't mention and I, I i saved it till now is you competed in simon cowell's america's got talent extreme i did in the usa boy as if you're not busy enough what was that all about so we had been contacted by one of their producers. They had told us initially, like, oh, you, you, we want you to be on America's Got Talent. We have this spinoff series of it called America's Got Talent Extreme, where it's basically all the acts that don't, that can't be fit into just like the normal stage setting. So if you've seen the show, you know, there's all those crazy acts with like jumps and um, other motorized vehicles. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. and so originally we were a little bit skeptical of it because I had known what America's Got Talent is. Obviously, it's, it's, it's really, really big here in the U.S. and around the world, actually. And so we were like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a circus act. I'm not going to go and <laughs> yeah, drive like something and do stunts on fire and blow myself up or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't do that. They seemed very, very, very adamant about getting me on the show. And so we did some negotiating and basically my act was to do the slalom with Simon. And oh, yeah. So oh, okay. <laughs> what we did was he drove 
the slalom verse. It was a shortened version of the slalom that I had set the world record for. I think the one that we did at, in America's Got Talent was like 12 or 13 cones. Okay. I did the slalom for the 50 cones. So it's a lot smaller. But, um, you know, you still get to kind of experience that. Um, and so we put Simon in. He went and drove the slalom first and, you know, they timed it and everything. And then they had me go and do it as well after him. Mm-hmm. It turned out, I don't remember the, how much, I think it was like a second or something like that. And Simon was like, oh, that's not that much. And Travis Pastrana, who is one of the judges, he, you know, he's a racer. He he does a lot of rally cross stuff. And uh, he was like, no, Simon, that's like, that's like a year. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, that's a lot of time on a short track yeah. like that, short course. Yeah. So, I mean, we, I worked with Porsche again on that. You know, Porsche Cars North America um, lent us the uh, Porsche Experience Center in oh, Atlanta. So, that's a you neat know, place. yeah, I mean, I, I'd never been there. I'd watched some videos and I basically had the whole place to myself. And, you know, the judges went out and did like a safety course and they took them around all the obstacles and everything. And um, one of those was the kick plate obstacle. So oh, basically, yeah. <laughs> this whole center is made for just normal people who want to, I guess, learn more about car control and all of that. And then you can like buy your Porsche and customize it there and everything. So yeah. <laughs> I, the kick play is supposed to um, simulate driving on ice. And then all of a sudden your rear end gets kicked out from under you. Yeah. And so, you, you know, have it, you have to be able to catch it without going into the wall or, I mean, in this case, without just skidding spinning, off. Yeah, spinning yeah, the car in Spinning circles. out or anything. And so they had me do it and they had Simon do it. And so Simon did it and, you know, he spun out and it was a very glorious spin and everything. <laughs> and then I did it and, um, you know, I caught it and everything because when you, when you're a race car driver, you, uh, you, you pick up these really quick reflexes. And so that's something that you have to train almost like how you train the rest of your body. And so I guess, you know, that's just kind of goes to show that, uh, race car drivers are, Quicker. <laughs> yeah, quicker. Than TV yeah. Stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um that there's more to it than what people might think. Oh yeah. It's a fun experience. I got to do that there. Uh past guest here, Ray Schaefer, who you may have met when you were there. Wonderful guy. He's done some track time too. Uh but yeah, that kick play thing, it you've never done it before. It's like, whoa, what happened? That was Yeah. Yeah, you gotta yeah. be fast. So <laughs> what fun. Well, that's a really cool experience to get to do that. And did that turn out to be a positive experience for you? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I've never been on anything that big, a production mm-hmm. that big. They had me go everywhere and like I was I was there for I think probably three days. Oh wow. That's a and big time commitment. It was they had me going all over the place, filming a bunch of stuff and I, 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 it was just a really cool experience for me. Fine. And so it was good to be able to say that I have done something as big as that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, exposure is good and people seeing you and those potential sponsors seeing you that you can handle yourself and be good in front of the camera and represent. That's what it's all about. So I think it turned out to be a good experience for you for sure. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Now you're still a young person, but uh, you maybe haven't had that many vehicles. Who knows? You may not even have one now other than the cars you race, but is there one vehicle in all the things that you've strapped yourself into or climbed into that really stands out for you? Well, I think probably the Formula 3 car, which is pretty much the latest car that I've driven. I think that's obviously a pretty special car to be driving just because it's the quickest car that I've driven. Yeah. And it's, I guess, that next step closer to Formula One. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, I guess that's just, it just kind of shows progress. And so, you know, there's that, obviously, the spider that I did the world record in that's that has a pretty big story to it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, you know, two different types of motorsport, but both have their own stories. Yeah, I think so. Well, Portia, if you're listening, I think you need to, uh, you know, share that car with Chloe and maybe uh, put her in there. I mean, 
Maybe you don't have to give it to her. Just let her borrow it for a few years. To <laughs> drive around in to, you know, yeah. represent the brand. I think that sounds like a, a good idea. Nice thing of them to do. So uh, let's talk a little bit about being a, a psychologist here. I'm going to crawl into your head a little bit. I'd love for you to share. If you were reincarnated, manifest as a vehicle, this isn't what you want to be. This is more about how you perceive the lady in the mirror, who you are deep down inside. What kind of vehicle would Chloe be? All right. So this is actually funny that you ask this because my first road car that I got, my parents found it and they were just like, this is, this is Chloe. Like, okay. Okay. (laughs) And so I have, or I had, I've since given it to my dad, a 2005 (laughs) Mini Cooper S in red. Okay. With like the white stripes on the, on the, on the, that go down the middle and just, a lot of people say a Mini Cooper tr- handles like a go kart. You know, it's yep. oh, it's yeah. light, it's quick, it's got a really short little wheelbase. Mm-hmm. It's a Chloe sized vehicle. I'm not that <laughs> tall. I mean, I, I think I think I think I'm the average height for women in America. I, I'm I'm five four five five, and so well, that's pretty tall. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess I guess it's it's average now at this point. Okay. So. It's a nice little fun car to drive. It's a manual, of course. Um, (laughs) And, uh, you know, all my friends are like, oh, my gosh, like, your car is so cool. And then, yeah, it it is. Like, (laughs) a lot of people have told me that my car is really cool. And it's I think it's just because it stands out. It's it's relatively quick. You know, it's got a supercharger and and everything. Mm -hmm. So all the people are like, oh, yeah. The non-car people are like, yeah, that sounds like fast (laughs) and so yeah i mean i've enjoyed driving it fun little cars for sure yeah yeah we give our daughter one of those for her as her first car and she's a very petite uh young lady and uh well now she's a mom but uh when when she got her first car it was a mini cooper and we put a license plate on that that was fun sized (laughs) uh, because uh, Paige is very petite the car is very little but i'll tell you i drove her off to college in that car and then would fly home and then fly back down to california and drive back home with with her in that car and they are a blast and there's an enormous amount of room in that car, which you wouldn't yeah. think there was. So I think they're great little cars. That, that's a perfect thing. I, I really enjoy driving that thing. Yeah, it was cool. And hers was red, too. So I love it. I love it. So I know that you're the ambassador at the Gift of Adoption Fund, shipped up now for athletes. Is that right? Is that a way that you found to give back to others? Yeah. So shift up now, obviously. I, uh, I'm i an ambassador for them. And so... Basically, you know, we we do a bunch of these promoting other women and um, helping them encourage themselves and to get into motorsports, not just as a driver, but into careers in motorsports, into um, like STEM careers. Yeah. And so we do a lot of these fan forum type of things and webinar. And so I, I think that's a good way to give back to the female motorsports community and then gift of adoption is something that just aligns really closely with my family, my siblings. I have, I have two younger siblings and then myself as well are all adopted. So it's a perfect way to give back to that community and also give them more exposure through something that doesn't have a lot of people who – Motorsports doesn't have a lot of women, obviously. Motorsports doesn't have a lot of people who are adopted. So those two mix together are just, you know, yeah. they make a really unique little combination. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, Mandy McGee, of course, involved with uh, Shift Up Now. She was uh, also a past guest here on Cars, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was great to learn about her and, and what she's doing there. So it's a tremendous uh, organization that you're you're a part of. Both of those is one, are wonderful. So tell us about a great book that you've enjoyed that you might want to share with our listeners today. A great book. Um, well, I, I, I mean, I read a lot for school. I uh, I think my favorite book that I've read so far is probably Life of Pi, but I have recently started Caitlyn Jenner's book. She had given it to me when I went out to L.A., and so, you know, of course I have to read it. Um, <laughs> you know, she's a very interesting person, so... You know, it's it's good to kind of get that little. And been a driver, she driven yeah. some some serious yeah. cars too. Yeah, she'd done some Trans Am, Sebring twelve hours. I mean, but when we were out in L.A., she had told us just so many stories about all the things that she'd driven and all the experiences as an athlete. And you know, I I just think uh, I can learn a lot from her. And then I think it's cool to read the book and be able to 
hear all these things that she has to say. The book titled The Secrets of My Life, right? Yep. Yeah, yep, that's it. I'll make sure I put a link to that book on a Chloe's show notes page. All my guests have uh, inspired us through recommending great books, so I will add that to the list of over 2,000 books there under the References tab. So before I let you go today, I'm going to enable you to go on the Ultimate Drive, which means I'm going to open up a big old checkbook and provide you with any car. You can go anywhere, and you can be driving with anybody, somebody living or somebody who's passed, which opens up the opportunities uh, in a wide variety of ways. So what does that ultimate drive look like for somebody like you? Man, um, I mean, the ultimate dream for me or the ultimate goal for me in motorsports is to get into Formula One. Yeah. I guess you can't have a passenger in that, but <laughs> well, maybe you can have a coach in your ear, you know, yeah, and, uh, you can have yeah. you know, somebody in the radio. But I would say I would choose whatever the best Formula One car is that is in the time that I am in Formula One. Okay. So, you know, that's somewhere in the future. That's not that's not quite, you know, known right now at this point. But right. man, I mean I would say a track that I would go to, um I think probably Monaco. That's a pretty cool track. Oh yeah, challenging. Wow. See you've you've answered that question in the most unique way I've heard so far. And I've heard some pretty really? unique answers, but nobody's gone into the future. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. I think if Miami turns out to be a good track, which is which it which it looks like it will be, if it turns out to be a good track for a Formula One car, I think that would little, be a pretty cool track to go to. Yeah. Little yeah. <laughs> Obviously Coda has a pretty cool layout. I've raced there in a GT car, so um I've been there before. I think that's a really cool track as well. It's got some things from a bunch of other iconic Formula One tracks. You know, I, I don't think I could choose one specific track there's in particular. There's a, a lot of great tracks you for know? F1 driving. Yeah, Monaco, Spa. I mean, there's so many of them. I would there. love to win Monaco. So that's why oh, I said yeah. that. You no know, kidding. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's an extremely unique answer to that question. I love it. That's why I like asking it uh, when people get creative like that. Chloe, you've taken us on a wonderful drive today. Uh, really proud of what you've done so far. And wow, just amazing what you're up to in your life. Before I let you go, could you share some words of inspiration with our listeners? Maybe a mantra, a quote, or a success quote that means something to you? So I have this little quote that I like personally. It, it, it might not be quite applicable to everybody, but um, I really like uh, William Shakespeare's quote, um, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Uh, That's just been a quote that I guess my mom introduced it to me. My mom yeah. is a teacher. She likes books. And so I guess that kind of just um, resonates with me a lot. I, I have like a little thing in my room like that has the quote on it and everything. And uh, yeah. it's 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 just uh, something that's a little inspirational, kind of just a little kick. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think if you kind of dive deeper into the meaning of it and everything, you can find what it means to you personally. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed that quote. Well, that, that Willie Shakespeare guy, you know. He knew oh, yeah. yeah. He could write some good stuff. So, yeah. you know, that's a great one. Nobody's ever recommended that. So you brought us a lot of new, unique things today, and I'm excited about that. Before I let you go, how can people learn more, more about you and the W Series? Well, you can uh, find me on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Chloe Chambers Racing and Twitter, Chloe C Racing. You can learn more about the W Series on their website or their social media channels, which are all W Series or W Series Racing. And then, uh, you know, I, I have my own website, but I think social media is the best way to stay uh, updated like minute to minute during race weekends and everything. Yeah, very cool. I'll make sure I put all those links on Chloe show notes page here. Again, Chloe, C-H-L-O-E Chambers. Uh, you can find her on the Cars Show website or just go out there and Google her name. She'll be all over the place. Uh, she's going places. I want to do a shout out. Thank you today to Barbara Burns from the Burns Group PR for introducing me to Chloe. Barbara, thank you for bringing me another great guest. You do awesome job. Chloe, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise. We wish you the best success in the W Racing Series and everywhere you go into the future. Really appreciate your time today until you and i talk again i'll see you down the road thank you you're welcome thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at cars yeah drive on over to cars to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun download your free copy of filler up 
a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!